Let's assume you want to get the items in a SharePoint list from Power Automate. Obviously, you use the get items that connects to SharePoint and get the items. But let's say you want to filter the items in the list using a field that is person or the data type is person or group. Now, one simple way is to get all of them, bring it inside Power Automate and filter it using the filter action, which is available inside Power Automate, but there are limitations. That's not a clean practice. The second way, or let's say should have been the first way, is using the OData filter. In this video, I want to show you how you can use OData filter to filter SharePoint list items from inside Power Automate using OData filter. This is going to be fun. Let's see. So let's assume we have a SharePoint list, and one of the columns in that SharePoint list is lookup. And we want to use get items inside Power Automate to filter for the items that match our search criteria based on that lookup field. Lucky enough, we have a scenario. When an employee leaves our company, we would like to create an email of all inventory items assigned to him or her and send it to Alureza. You guessed it right, we have a list inside SharePoint called employees that has a display name and the employee column, which is actually a person field. The two other columns, it doesn't really matter. But on the same site, we have another list called inventory items, in which we have the inventory item and another field called assigned to, which is a lookup from the list of employees. The suggested solution should be something like that. We need to create a Power Automate flow that accepts the leaving employee email address. Then the flow should use that email address to look up the employee in that list. And when the record related to that employee is found, it should use that ID and filter the inventory items based on the assigned to field, which is our lookup, which is the topic of our video. So without saying, you realize that it's a one to many relationship. So we need to have two lookups. One lookup to find the employee by email. Yes, employee is a person field, but in reality, it's a lookup backstage. It's a lookup that you can select the items from all available users in this environment. And the second lookup is going to be the assigned to, which is the obvious. But don't rush. Before you go to Power Automate and create flow, we need to have a few things before we start. First of all, you need site collection administrator access to the SharePoint site that you're working with. Site owner is not enough. Why? Well, because you need a second tool called SharePoint Client Browser, and we need to download it. To do that, just go to Google, search for SharePoint Online Client Browser. You will find a SharePoint Client Browser. Click on it, and it takes you to GitHub. Scroll down, and you will find the SharePoint Online download. Just click on download. It's a zip file. Download it and expand it, and you will have something like this. And to run this application and connect it to your SharePoint site, you must be the site collection administrator. Now that we have all the tools, let's start by creating our flow. If you go inside Power Automate Portal, I want to create a new flow, and it's going to be an instant cloud flow. I want to fire it manually, so I give it a name, Employee Inventory Lookup. And I click on Create. Fantastic. The flow is supposed to get the employee email, so I click on Input, and I pick Email. I call it Employee Email. And as I said, we need to create a Get Items action. Just be careful. We need Get Items. Get Item only searches by the item ID, and it gives you only one single record. For the OData, you need Get Items. So I pick get items and I call it get employee by email. The site address, I go to the site and I right click on the icon and I copy the link address. This is the site that contains both my lists. One of them is employees and the other one is inventory items that you see it here. So I go back to my Power Automate. Site address, click on drop down, click on custom values, and I just stick the URL here. We are good. The list name that I want to pick is going to be employees. And done. As soon as you save it, it will complain because 
Power Automate doesn't like to bring all the items in a SharePoint list. It says, you know what? There is something called all data. You better use it. Sure, I got it. We want to use it. So I click on Show Advanced Options, Filter Query. Now we need the field name to use it in our filter query. And that's where we go to SharePoint Online Client Browser. So when you run SPCB, you can come here and click on Site Collections, and I want to add a site. If you need the URL of the site, I just paste it here, and I click on OK. If it's the first time that you're running it, it's going to prompt you for the username and password. Just go with that and connect. Again, if you are not the Site Collection Administrator, this application will not connect. So we have the site. Just let's expand it and go and find the lists. The list that we want to connect to is called employees. So let's scroll down and find employees here. Now, if I expand employees, you will find fields. There are lots of fields here that most of them are internal fields or the system fields. But if I scroll down here, you will find a field called employee, which it says it's a custom column. We need the name of this field and not the title that we see here, because this title can change. What you're looking for is static name. Let me just scroll down. For this field, there's a property called static name, which is employee. We are lucky that the title and static name are the same. But quite often it happens that someone changes the title or the title that you have has a space in it. So in that case, static name is different. So always pick the value from the static name. I bring it back to Power Automate under Filter Query. I put the column name there. But this employee is a person field. And the person field has a lot of properties inside it, one of which is email. And we are specifically looking for that email. OData is not something new related to Power Automate. It goes back to old ages that we were using REST API. So if you want to get a list of available items inside this OData query, you need to look into the REST API. I made your life a whole lot easier. So for the person or group field, this is a list of all the fields here. And we're looking for email. Just be careful. It's case sensitive. So I bring it back here. And the syntax is forward slash email. And we are looking for the records that the email is equal to put two single quotes, and you want to insert the value of the email that you're searching for in between these two quotes. So I scroll down here, and I pick employee email. And I stick it here. Just make sure it sits between the two single quotes. Now I can save it, and we are good. So the first part of the lookup is done, and we have the ID of this field. Let's try it. And we should have the ID of the record containing the employee that we provide the email. Let's test it. So here, I just add a variable, initialize variable, and I give it a name as employee record ID. I copy this, and I also rename this variable. So we know what it is. The data type is integer. There we go. And for the value, because this get employee by email returns a set of records, while we are only looking for one record, let's come back here. And instead of directly picking up the values from here, I come back here and go to the expression. By the way, if you just add the field directly here, the flow assumes that get items returns multiple records. So it wraps this initialized variable with an apply to each loop, which we really don't need it because we know that this get items with our filter should return only one record. So to get only one record, which is the very first one, I click on this guy, I click on expressions, and I say use first. Okay, open the bracket. I need the first record of the get employee by email. So I click on Dynamics. I scroll down. And whatever the value it returns, which is the list of items, I push it in between the brackets for the first. 
but we don't need the entire record. I just need the ID. We are good. I click on OK. And if you wonder where this ID is, let me bring you back to the list of employees. And if I modify this view, edit current view, I can scroll down and I can find ID and I will add it here. It's a good idea to make it the first one so we can easily refer to that. I click on OK and you will see this is the ID we are looking for. Now, let's try it and see if it works. So I'm looking for James Smith's ID. So I go back here, save, test, manually, test, continue. We are looking for James Smith. So I go back here and I look for James Smith and I click on run flow. Done. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got ID 2. And we go back here, James Smith has the ID 2. So we are good. Lookup 1 is done perfectly. Now it's time to build the lookup 2, which is a lot easier. Because we have the ID, we don't care about those weird fields that may or may not exist. I come back here to my flow. While I have the ID, I click on edit. I add a new step. This time I say get items again. I click on get items. I need to rename it. I call it get inventory items. We need a URL of the site again. Copy. And here I paste it. List name is going to be inventory items. And again, when we want to write OData query, we go back to our SharePoint Online Client Browser. This time we are looking for inventory items. So I close this employees list and I'm looking for inventory items. Expand, fields expand, and this time we are looking for assign to. And I click on this one, scroll down, and again, we're looking for static name, assigned to is there, and the static name is also assigned to. So just make sure you get the static name. I bring it back here, and just like before, for the filter query, I just stick that assigned to here, but we are looking for the ID field, because we do have the ID, and I can say it's equal to the employee record ID. We do not put a single quote here because employee ID is a number and we are searching for a number. Single quote is for strings. So let me just save it. And assuming that this one returns all the records related to the employee that we provided the email address, I can simply create another variable. Initialize variable. And I want to say rename it's going to be employee inventory items. Let me just copy the same thing and provide the name for the variable. This time it's going to be a string. Let me just save it. And right after that, for every item that it returns, I want to append it to this variable. So append to string. There we go. Let me just rename it and I call it append inventory item. And the name of the variable is there is only one item. The value that we got to add is going to be the items that get inventory items returns. So you click on it. If I scroll down, get inventory items, I need the title for the inventory item. As soon as you add it, it wraps it using an apply to each, which is exactly what we want because we have more than one item, but we want every single item be in one line. So right after the title, we press enter. So it will add the next item to the new line, which is great. Now I just need to send the email, send email v2, and I want to send it to myself. And Subject is going to be employee items. 
And for the body, I can put the employee items and send it to Ali Rosa. Let me just save it and we test it. Test. And I want to say test. Continue. And I want to go for James Smith. And I say run flow. Done. Apparently done. So let's go back to my mailbox. And there we go. Water hose that we have here, there is only one item assigned to James Smith. Let me add one more item here. So let's say inventory items. And I want to call it new test item item. And I want to assign it to James Smith. And I click on save. Let me run it again and see if it returns two items because now we have two items assigned to James. So edit, test, again test. It's going to be James Smith, run flow, done. Now let's go back to my mailbox. Click on it. And there we go. Water hose test item. The reason that it actually doesn't put it in the second line, because send email v2 accepts HTML, not just a regular enter. So if you want it to appear in two different items, you're going to come back here and expand this guy, expand, oops, should be under edit. So you go to append, instead of enter, you can put a new line in HTML language. It's going to be br slash, let me just save it and test it again. Test, and I'm going to add James Smith, run flow, and done. So let me go back to my mailbox. This time, it shows every item in a separate line. Easy, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Thank you.